All right. Good evening and welcome to another Tuesdays in the Word. And uh, I am so excited. I just saw the name of one of my very best friends uh, for ever since we were little kids, uh, Mr. Phil Eaton, all the way. I guess you're in uh, North Carolina and uh, watching, uh, he, I know he sneaks in and watches every now and then. He's, he's told me that, but uh, so glad to see you, see you on the uh, the chat, Phil, and uh, hope you guys are doing well. Married life is treating you well and everything, and uh, uh, Phil is uh, retired from being a high school principal and, and uh, got married and moved to North Carolina, and uh, so it's uh, always good to see you. Good to see James, and I guess Twyla's probably watching on Facebook. Uh, we've been praying for you guys. I know uh, Twyla was not feeling too well. Uh, Sunday, so we've prayed, been praying for her, and and James, uh, I think, kind of overdid it mowing the yard, uh, the mowing the lawn at the church. That's a lot of mowing. That's a lot of work, and so I tell you, James and Twyla are, are there's such a blessing, and and uh, James does so much for the church, and uh, we love and appreciate you guys and all that you do, and uh, God, God bless you. Good to see my mom on there. Praise God. Always good to see Sharon. She's one of my favorites. And uh, let's see who else. I know Rachel is probably watching <clears throat> if she if she has found it. <laughs> she I went in there a minute ago, a few minutes ago, and she was watching last week's uh uh, service, you know, last week's stream, and she didn't know she thought that was tonight's. And I said, "You're watching last week's. So I haven't started yet." So, <laughs> uh, so I think hopefully she's found it by now. Good to see the roaches. Praise the Lord. And let's see here. Anybody else that uh, I know? We've got got some more that are that are uh, on that are that are not commenting, but that's okay. We appreciate you, whether you comment or not. We, we like for you to comment. That way we can kind of fellowship together. And, and uh, I like for our live streams to be as close to as close as possible to being the same as if we were all in the same room. And uh, so... Yeah, that that's the way we did it. started doing that during the pandemic when we uh, we couldn't meet in person. So I I just kind of told everybody that uh, the chat the chat room is basically it's amen corner uh, while I'm teaching, and then at the end I always like to hang out with you guys for a few minutes, and it would turn the chat room into. The fellowship hall, and so we get to to love on one another and and uh, just have a good time. Praise the Lord! Well, it, it's another good day to be alive. It's another good week to be serving God, and and uh, you know you may be concerned about things that are going on in the world, but that's all right. Uh, Jesus is still Lord, and God is still on His throne. No matter what what you hear on the news, and you know whether it's good or bad or indifferent, Jesus is Lord. No matter what your doctor says, Jesus is Lord. No matter what your banker says, Jesus is Lord, and uh, He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, you know we we. Uh, we get confused about facts and truth. And, uh, you know, facts change. Uh, that's why they print newspapers every day. But truth, the, the Word of God is truth. Jesus said we would know the truth, and the truth would make us free. And God's Word never changes. And uh, so, like I said, they print newspapers every day. I married the daughter of a newspaper editor, I had to pass a spelling test to get married, but uh, I joke about that, but that was kind of his pet peeve, uh, people that use uh, improper grammar and misspelled words, and uh, that, that just, you know, that, that really bothered him. But, uh, but you know, uh, newspapers get printed every day, and uh, because situations, facts change. 
You know, right now, it's, I don't know how cold it is outside. It's probably about 54 degrees or something like that. You know, later on tonight, it may be 48 degrees. And it's a fact right now that it's whatever it is. Later on, it'll be a fact that it's whatever it is then, and it, it will change. It varies. But the truth, you know, your doctor will give you a, a factual statement when you see the doctor. He'll give you a factual uh, diagnosis. But the truth, we need to listen to what Jesus says, because, you know, if we listen to the doctors, you know, a lot of times we give up. There's, there's they, Sometimes they give us very little hope at all. You know, Rachel was told in November of 2020 that uh, she had a week to live uh, if, if we didn't get her treated. Now, thank God, uh, God connected us to the best doctors in the world. You know, my friend Phil was uh, in, in a coma uh, in, uh, for, I think, was it 58 or 59 days? He was on a ventilator. And uh, I mean, you know, the, it, statistically, I think that the doctors say that if you're on a ventilator more than, I don't know, was eight or 10 days, then uh, you have a very, very small percentage of chance that you'll ever recover. And uh, hang on just a second. Huh? Get you what? What's that? Uh, oh, Rachel can't get the sound on. She can hear me. Let's see here. Let me make sure. Okay. There we go. It's back on. All right. Hallelujah. I, I'm I'm the IT guy. <laughs> so yeah, you know, good. I'd rather her come in and and uh, have me fix it than than uh, get through and go back there and say, well, what do you think? She said, I don't know. I couldn't hear anything. So. <laughs> Uh, but I can't be everybody's IT guy. You're going to have to figure out how to get the sound on on your own out there. But uh, anyway, I, I was talking about how that uh, the truth, the truth of God's word is eternal. And we have promised we have a better covenant based on better promises. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're here to teach the good news. And uh, praise the Lord. Let's see who else is there. Twyla, good to see you. Laura, our good friend, Laura Chandler, uh, just dear friend for, I guess, probably well over 30 years now. Uh, we've been good friends. She uh, was a, a, a charter member of Prevailing Faith Church in, in Austin. And uh, she was my secretary for, for a while. And, and uh, she's just a great blessing, a great friend in the Lord. And uh, we, we love you, Laura. And uh, let's see here. All right. Well, uh, before I get into the Word, I don't want to take too long uh, with with uh, talking and announcements and everything, because I, I really want to get into the Word. And uh, last week, I went kind of long. I don't want to go too long uh, tonight. I, I want to be uh, respectful of your time, and I really do mean that. I really respect uh, you've taken the time to to set aside and and uh, listen to the word, and uh, not not that we're not going to shortchange you, but uh, you know unless the Holy Spirit moves, I I really want to be very respectful of your time, and you guys have always been so gracious. When I go long, I, everybody says it was good, and and I appreciate that. But uh, before we get into the word, I just want to remind you that uh, if this uh, live stream has been a blessing. To you, we do welcome your free will offerings. And uh, to give, you can just visit steveyoungministries.org slash donate. And uh, once again, I always say uh, if you're a committed member of a local church, your tithes belong in that local church. Do not send your tithes to me. Now, some of you call me your pastor. And uh, that's okay. Uh, some of you live in areas where you haven't found a good church or have physical uh, situations where you can't get out. And if I'm your pastor, then, then by all means, uh, you can uh, send your tithes 
uh, to to this ministry. But uh, if you're committed, Rachel and I are tithers. We are committed members of Prevailing Faith Church here in Pasadena. And you're all welcome to come anytime you're in the Houston area. Come visit us. We'll hug your neck and, and tell you how good it is to see you. But uh, we, uh, and of course, we have some of our friends from Prevailing Faith Church that are that are so good to watch every every week. And uh, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm having to look around my microphone to see uh, let me move this over here to a different screen so I can see uh, who's making comments and everything. Uh, I've got my got my screen worked up. Now, I've got two monitors here uh, so I can see everything. But anyway, uh, praise God. Rachel is now online and, and uh, good to go. So I can I can teach the word now. Rachel is here and. Uh, Everybody say, God bless Rachel. It is, you know, such a blessing to to see her. And, uh, you know, Rachel is, is I'll tell you, she's such a good wife and such a loving and, and caring wife. And and uh, she takes, you know, good care of me. Did, did the sound go off again? Whoop. Well, let's see here. Uh-oh. Uh okay. Well, uh, it is, oh, you had it. I don't know what happened there. Praise the Lord. But you may have to just go back into it. There we go. Well, it looks to be locked up on your phone. So let's see here. Just go out of Facebook and go back in. And then you will be able to watch it. Let me find, where's my text I sent you? <laughs> nothing like live, nothing, nothing better than live streaming. Praise God. Let's see here. We'll just go to Facebook and... Uh, You'll find it here. Here we go. And here we are. There you go. And I think you are on. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Are you ready for the word? Praise God. Now you know what life is like here in, in, uh, in our home. And uh, praise the Lord. So let's get into the Word and uh, get into some good stuff tonight. All right, and uh, we've been in a series uh, on uh, the book of Ephesians. You know, normally I, I, I'm doing this differently from the way I normally uh, teach. I usually teach, you know, topically. I'll, I'll pick a topic that I feel that God has laid on my heart, and I'll just study and put together, you know, scriptures in context with the topic that I'm teaching about. But the Lord led me to do uh, an, an expository teaching on the book of Ephesians. I don't normally, I study in this way, but I don't normally teach in this way. But it, just in my daily devotional and studying, I, I study more in a in an expository fashion and but I've really enjoyed doing this it's it took me seven only took me seven weeks to make it through the first chapter of Ephesians <laughs> and, and I, I, as you can tell we've been kind of breaking it down kind of word for word phrase by phrase and there's nothing wrong with that there's there's just so much rich uh, depth in in uh, revelation in the book of Ephesians. It's one of my favorite books. And we finally finish up last week with the uh, the prayer in uh, the last part of the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And so I just want to just quickly read this because we're going to start in chapter 2 tonight. 
And you're going to see that there's there's a little bit of a contrast between how Paul ends chapter 1 and how he starts chapter 2. Now, bear in mind that when Paul wrote this letter to the church at Ephesus, he didn't break it up into chapter and verse. It, it, I mean, that was added later on by translators, you know, just so we would be able to locate uh, and find, you know, scriptures. You know, when I tell you to turn to the book of Ephesians chapter one, everybody knows where to turn. But Paul wrote this as a letter to the church at Ephesus. And when he ended up this prayer in uh, in chapter one, he didn't say, okay, now let's turn the page. This is going to be a new chapter. Uh, but he did he, he did offer a contrast that we're going to see. But let's read the prayer in uh, verse 15. Uh, Paul said, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. And I talked about last week how that is, that's really, a, in a nutshell, the New Testament uh, law. There's the New Commandments, New Testament commandments. In uh, 1 John, the Bible, in, I think it's chapter 3, it says that this is the commandment, that you believe on him and that you love one another. And, and so that is the that is the commandment under the the New Testament. We're not under the Old Testament law, but uh, we are commanded to in order to enter into this new covenant, you enter in by believing in Jesus. And so that that's that's how we start off and enter into this covenant that's a better covenant based on better promises. We believe in Jesus. And so he said, therefore, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, in other words, you you have entered into the body of Christ and your love for all the saints. And uh, that we are we ought to love one another. And it's a shame, uh, it, you know, it's a shame to see so many uh, pages on Facebook and YouTube that that are designed to do nothing but criticize other ministries. It's one thing if they were, you know, just non-believers criticizing believers. You know, that, that, that's I can handle that. But what I really struggle with is when I see people that are supposed to be believers that take it upon themselves to not only warn people about false doctrine, that's one thing. It's it's okay to to say, well, you know, this is what we teach, this is what we believe, and you know, be, beware. You know, Paul uh, told us to beware of of different things. Peter told us to beware of different things. James told us, and, and so on and so forth. And but it's another thing to make it your entire ministry to go on and uh, go on the air and expose everybody that you disagree with as a false teacher. And so that that's not scriptural, it's not right and uh, you know that that's just uh, that's a, a, a terrible terrible uh, editorial of where the church much of the church body is and there are people that just just eat it up they just they spend hours a day just just watching video after video after video of, of exposing uh you know you know this person or that person and and talking about this person is a false prophet this person is a false teacher and all this kind of stuff listen if you teach the truth then, you know, the, the way you recognize false doctrine is by majoring on the truth. You don't have to spend so much time exposing false doctrine. You know, they don't teach uh, people to recognize uh, uh, phony money. Uh, you know, they, they don't teach them to recognize it by showing them phony dollar bills or, or phony you know, three, they don't make $3 bills. So they don't, you know, you know how they teach you to recognize money that is not genuine, that's not real? By studying the real thing. The more you study the real thing, the more you automatically will recognize what's not real. 
And so that's true doctrinally. And so that's why I, I really try to focus and major on teaching you the truth. And so anyway, Paul said, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, talk about how this prayer is, is, a, uh, is an eternal thing. Prayer is, is not just, uh, you know, there are some prayers that are, that are just for a season, but many prayers, uh, the prayers in the New Testament, particularly, you know, prayers like this, where Paul is describing his prayers for the church. Uh, these are prayers that have an eternal value. God is still answering this prayer. And you can substitute your name for the, the people at the church in Ephesus when, when you read this prayer. Uh, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I'm going to go on. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Again, that, that's just more proof that this prayer is related to not just a specific time frame. It is an eternal prayer. Jesus prayed prayers that had eternal value. They had they had a lifespan that that is eternal. Paul prayed this prayer, and he said that that God has given Jesus a name that is far above. All principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And so, you know, again, if you go back and watch the the seven uh, about almost seven hours of teaching that I've done on the first chapter of, of Ephesians this is a, a very climactic close uh to the first chapter and it, it's a, a just ends up with this just awesome powerful prayer and uh and so he he ends it the, the first chapter again this is not an end. But it, it's just, to us, it's the end of, end of the first chapter. Now, let's turn over to the second chapter. And it starts off in verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and, and sins. Now, one, the first thing I want you to notice is, uh, and you... The words he made alive, if you'll notice there, they're in italics. If you look it up in the Greek, that's not in the original. It, it just goes, and you who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of, disobedient, uh, of, of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Now, so let's back up here. And you, uh, now, it, I'm not saying that he didn't make us alive. He did make us alive. But that, that, those three words are not in the, the original. So really, Paul said, and you who were dead in trespasses and sins, you who were, past tense, 
dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Now, why is Paul building up in chapter one and getting us so so you know, pumped up on on uh, how what God has done and praying that 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 uh, God gives us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the eyes of our understanding being open to know what are the riches of the inheritance in the saints all these things and and just 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 building line upon line and and building you up and building you up and then verse one of chapter two he says, and you who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, this uh, of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of obedience. We're going to see why he does this, because he wants you, he wants you and me to remember what it was without Jesus. But more importantly, that if you read the whole context, we're going to see that he is showing us that we, he's writing, remember, he's writing to the church at Ephesus. These were Gentiles. He's writing to people that had no covenant with God under the Old Testament. They had no covenant. And you're going to see that. And so he is just presenting the uh, the uh, in the context the uh, the difference between gentile and jew those who had no covenant and those who had a covenant under the old testament and he has to show us where we came from and so he brings us at, at by the end of the chapter he brings us together with the Jews, or with the the the, the uh, children of Israel, who had a covenant, but they still are brought together with us under one man, Jesus Christ, and it's through that one person, through Jesus Christ, Jews and Gentiles have access to the things of God. But He is pointing this out. We're gonna we're gonna see that as we go. So. Back again, and you who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others, just as those who haven't yet accepted Jesus, who haven't yet believed in Jesus. We were just like them. And uh, But God, verse, one, verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Now, but God, who is rich in mercy. Now, he is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. You know, it, it, it's hard to show mercy on somebody you don't like. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever had somebody that you just... Just they just rubbed you the wrong way, no matter what they said or did, and uh, you know. And, and I know you're, you're probably thinking of somebody. I personally have never had that happen, but you need to repent of that. No, listen, we've all we've all had people that that rubbed us the wrong way at times. We've all had had people that just no matter what they did, it just seemed like it was the wrong thing, and. Uh, just something about even the sound of their voice just, you know, just kind of grated on you. And, and uh, and you know, as we mature in the Lord, we learn how to walk in love with people. Uh, 
But you know, when when you have somebody that is uh, it, it is an enemy, and I'm not talking about a believer that just you know gets on your nerves, but I mean I'm talking about somebody that is just an absolute sinner that hates God, that hates you, and will bend over backwards to do anything to expose anything that you've ever done and try to get you in trouble and all this kind of stuff. It's hard to show mercy to somebody you don't like. But when you love somebody, I mean, when you really love somebody, you know, uh, uh, my children did, they were not perfect. And, you know, I, I tried to discipline, but I always loved my children. And so it was easy to show mercy uh, to my children. And so it, it's easy for me to show mercy to my wife. It's easy for my wife to show mercy to me because we love each other. We'll be married uh, 48 years in June. And, uh, you know, you don't stay married 48 years without loving each other. You don't stay married 48 years without having to prove that you show mercy because you love each other, too. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's times, you know, Brother Osteen, John Osteen used to say, you know, uh, Dodie and I have had, had 28 wonderful years together. 28 out of 29 is not too bad. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, every relationship has trials and tribulations at times. But when you love each other, you learn to show mercy. And God is rich in mercy. He is rich. He is he is overflowing. He is dripping with mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together. See here it brings it in that he made us alive. So he did Paul didn't leave us without knowing that God made us alive. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Now, here's what I want you to see. First of all, here he talks about mercy, the God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. You're not saved by mercy. You're saved by grace. You are saved by grace. See, God is merciful to to all through because because of Jesus. It, God, it was the mercy of God that sent Jesus to die on the cross. See, mercy uh, it, mercy means uh, you don't get what you do deserve. Grace is where you get what you don't deserve. That's the difference between mercy and grace. God showed his mercy by sending Jesus. He showed his grace when Jesus was raised from the dead. And the Bible says in the book of Romans that Jesus was raised because of the justification, that when we were justified, he was raised from the dead. That means that, that we have been made just before God. Now God deals with us not just out of mercy. He deals with us, with you and me as believers, out of grace. And he deals with, and, and you access grace by faith. Romans chapter 5 says that we access the grace of God by faith, verse 1. And so we access the grace of God by faith. The mercy of God was, was given and displayed through Jesus on the cross. Now that he's raised from the dead, and we're going to celebrate his resurrection this Sunday, Easter Sunday, and, and that resurrection is proof that, we, that God has justified you and me, not just mercy. He's not just, now, see, mercy withholds, you know, giving you what you really deserve. It, it got, mercy, the mercy of God doesn't give you what you do deserve, uh, which is punishment, <laughs> big time. But the grace of God gives you what you don't deserve, because the grace of God through the mercy of God, because of His love, the mercy and grace work together. But they, they're two sides. They're like they're like the two pieces of bread of a sandwich. And there's two sides to it. There's mercy and there's grace. They come together, and that equals salvation. You 
recognize the mercy of God. That, that, and then that's why Paul talks about all, all of our sins and all the mistakes, the trespasses and sins, and, and we walked according to the course of this world. We needed mercy, but we needed more than mercy. We needed grace. Just mercy alone does not get you to heaven. Let me say that again. Just mercy alone does not get you to heaven. If that was the case, then everybody would go to heaven no matter what, because God's mercy was poured out for the whole world. His grace is available to the whole world through faith. Now, because of grace, it is not just mercy that forgives us of sins. First John says that if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Think about that. It's not mercy now that forgives you, that God forgives you of your sins. It is grace. It's because of grace that God forgives, because grace justifies you. So even when you sin, it is the justice of God to forgive you, not punish you. It's not just the mercy of God now. It's the justice of God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, grace completes us. Grace completes the mercy of God in our lives and turns it into justice. People think, well, you know, God, please have mercy. Please be merciful to me. Please have mercy on me. You know, now, it's one thing when, you're, when you are accepting the Lord and, and, and all that, but once you begin to recognize who you are in Christ, it's not just simply, yes, God is merciful. I'm not saying he's not merciful, but it is now because of our right relationship with God through the blood of Jesus, through the resurrection life of God that has come and, and lives on the inside of us, it is now the justice of God to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I mean, that's powerful. That's powerful. He goes on and says, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, not his mercy, but his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Thank God for the mercy of God. I am not at all discounting the mercy of God. God is rich in mercy. He's dripping with it. But it's the grace of God. Now that we're born again, <clears throat> we live by the grace of God. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ, in Christ Jesus unto or for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, that word for we are his workmanship means something that has been made. You have been made and created in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are become new, and all things are of God. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. It's not good works that saves you, <clears throat> and we don't do good works to please God. We do good works because we believe in him, and right believing produces right actions. We don't, we, it's, it's faith. Hebrews uh, says that without faith, it is not possible to please God. So it's our faith that pleases God. Should we do good works? Absolutely. 
We do good works because we believe in him. And because we believe in him, we just automatically, you, you'll do more good works by focusing on believing in Jesus than you could ever do on your own. And you're not justified by your works. You're justified by believing in God's grace. It is by grace you are saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so we are his workmanship. He has made us. He has formed us and, and created us just like he formed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He has formed you and me in his image and after his image. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You see, our, our, the new creation is made to do good works. The, the workmanship of God is made. We are formed. It is our nature as we follow the nature of God in us to do good works. But notice here, let's just, just back up here. In verse 1, it says, and you. It, it talks about you individually. You. Th this is pointing out that every individual uh, was dead in trespasses and sins. You were, I was, Phil Eaton was, uh, Brenda was, Rachel was, uh, Mary was, James Sampson, Twyla, Cena, all, all of us, you know, we, we were dead in trespasses and sins. But, and we, we did once walk according to the course of the air, according to the prince of the power of the air, and all of these things. But then now he starts, verse 3, it starts combining us together. It's not just an individual now. And now as we become believers, it's, it, it is an individual thing, yes. But we have, we have been created to be together. You see, God doesn't want you to be alone as a believer. God doesn't want you to feel like you're all by yourself. God doesn't want you to feel like that it's just you and him. Now, yes, we do need to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, but let's not forget that we are part of the body of Christ, and God is doing something with us together, not just with you and not just with me. It is, it is a us and we, not me, me, me. And so uh, if you notice there, as after about verse 3, he starts talking about us and we, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, but uh, just as the others, we were all alike, and, and just like the, the children of Israel, the uh, Gentiles and Jews, both were children of wrath because neither one of us could fulfill the law. The Jews couldn't fulfill the law. We were never under the law. We were just children of wrath and, you know, children of disobedience. I mean, you know, it just was our human nature because of sin. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places. See, this is where people that say, "Well, you know, I don't need the church. I, you know, me and God, we got our own thing going. I just go out in the woods." And I go to the lake and, you know, I watch the birds and I catch the fish and I do this. And, and I just, you know, I just see God in nature and he knows my heart and I know him. And I don't, you know, but this church thing, we don't need. Well, you are denying what God, the purpose that God has in even saving us. We're born again to be not alone, but to be a part of a body, to be a part of the body of Christ. And that means that we need to be part of our local church. Local churches knit together with other local churches, and, and there's, there's one gigantic 
universal church of God in the world, but we're all many different families, but we're all related through Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that we are to walk in love with one another. And God has done a supernatural work to bring us all together. And so that's that's I'm going to stop there. Uh, I didn't get as far as I wanted to, but that's all right. That, that, but that's you'll see what that that's what Paul is kind of talking about in Ephesians chapter two, Ephesians chapter one. He he didn't start off chapter two to to knock us down. He wanted us to realize what it is to need the mercy of God. He wanted us to realize what it is to see the mercy of God and receive the grace of God, to see that God didn't give us what we do deserve, but he gave us by grace what we don't deserve except through Jesus. And so we believe in him, and through Jesus, we find the grace of God. We access the grace of God, and now instead of relying on the mercy of God for forgiveness, we rely on the justice of God to, for forgiveness of sins, because we all still make mistakes, but it's the justice of God to forgive us. And I better, <laughs> I'll, I'll stop there, because if I don't stop there, I'll, I'll keep on going. But uh, did y'all get anything out of that? Let me go back to my uh, my screen screen here let's take a look at the uh, at the notes uh, or the the chat uh, what uh, what people are saying here praise god uh, good to see some amens good to see good words good uh, all, all of that phil was even he, he was so confident he said amen in advance even before i ever started preaching <laughs> and uh, praise god Yes, Phil, Dick Nichols was a great man, and Rachel will say amen to that, too. So, uh, I think I saw my brother-in-law, Andy, uh, on here uh, pop up uh, a minute ago. That uh, I don't know if you're watching Andy or not, but uh, we're going to pray for Andy. Andy is is uh, fighting a battle in his body. He's, he's uh, diagnosed with uh, esophageal cancer, but they can't even operate yet because he's battling with some uh, neuropathy issues. Uh, uh, it's a very serious uh, situation, but we know that with God, all things are possible. And uh, we saw God, we have seen God do miracle after miracle with Rachel and and uh, and, and with me. I, you know, they told me in uh, just about three weeks before Rachel got sick in 2020, I had a, an ocular stroke and I had no blood flow to my left eye for uh, over four days. And they said I would never see again out of that eye. There was no retinal activity at all. And now I've got uh, 20, 40 vision in that eye. And so, you know, I'm, uh, it, it's not perfect yet, but I'm still standing in faith. But, you know, just where it is, is a miracle. And and so we've seen God do miracles, and you know we know that God still heals today, and He still does miracles. We saw God raise up Phil Eaton. Uh, I mean, he in the natural he shouldn't be alive today, but but God raised him up for a reason, and uh, so we thank God for that. But uh, uh, well, good to see the Garcias. Praise God. Uh, they they're with Joe and Leonor. We love you guys and appreciate you. And hey, Janita, good to see the Cox family. She was late, but that's all right. Better better late than never. And uh, we love you, Janita and, and Vernon and, and all, all of the tribe. But uh, I want us to pray. We're going to pray for Andy. And uh, we're going to pray for uh, Rachel has a good friend that uh, <clears throat> that that uh, was diagnosed with uh, stage four cancer and given a, a negative report, but we're uh, praying for her. Her name is Paula. And then uh, Rachel had a cousin that passed away uh, recently. Uh, I think her name is Stacy, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> I may have that wrong, but I, I believe that's right. And her funeral is tomorrow. But, uh, you know, uh, they're, you know, part of life is is dying and uh, you know the important thing is to be ready and uh, and and access that grace that I've been talking about and and uh, and understand 
uh, you know, it's, it's not enough to just depend on mercy. You need the grace of God. You need to understand that the grace of God and that you access it by faith. And uh, so uh, l- let me just uh, pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just lift up Andy to you. And I thank you that, that uh, Lord, that you've got your hand on his life and, and you're guiding him and, and that you will lead him. And I lift up Susan and uh, and Dylan and all, all the family. And I pray that you give them supernatural strength. Lord, uh, strengthen Susan as she's she just done so much and, and and just help her to not get worn down. Just help her to stay strong. And Lord, I thank you that your healing power is still active and alive today. You are well able to, to minister life and healing to Andy's body. And I speak life to his legs, Lord, to, to his all the way from his waist down, all all and his his hands and all the nerve pain, all the 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 terrible pain that he's uh, experiencing. Lord, I thank you that you are aware and that none of this has caught you off guard, and that you are well able to touch his body. I ask you to give him supernatural peace tonight, help him rest, help him have your peace that passes all understanding, give him favor with the doctors and and with the insurance companies. And and Lord, I thank you that, that he will rise up and uh, that he will see all of his days fulfilled because of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray for Paula. I thank you that you're able to heal cancer. Lord, I've seen you heal Rachel. I've seen uh, Dodie Osteen healed. Lord, of metastatic cancer of the liver, told that she just had weeks to live and, and uh, never received any treatments. Lord, I've seen Pastor Shepard healed of, of cancer in his liver and, and, and throughout his body. And Lord, I thank you that he is healed, that he's a walking miracle. Lord, we've seen you do so many good things, and we trust, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy. We trust in your grace and we believe in you. And I ask you for for your grace to be poured out in abundance, Lord God, on these people that need your strength. Lord, I thank you that that I thank you so much for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you that you've justified us and that that you've made us right so that it's now the justice of God to forgive us and that we've been made the righteousness of God. Lord, I pray for anyone that's watching right now that may not know you as their Lord and Savior, that they would accept. And uh, you may be watching live. You may be watching, you know, a year from now. You may be watching two years from now. But the same Holy Spirit is still alive and well and operating. If you just repeat this prayer, Father, I believe that you love me. You sent Jesus. I believe that Jesus is my Lord. Come into my life. I give you my life. Take me, Lord, and I receive your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. If you prayed that prayer in faith and believed it, then you just got born again. And so I just want to let you know that that we love you guys. Rachel and I love you guys. I'm going to we're going to close out the the live part here. I'm going to keep it open so that we can visit in the uh in the fellowship hall just for a few minutes here. And uh so ha- hang out if you will just for a few minutes and and uh, we'll love on each other and and pick on each other and have a good time. And don't forget to share and like the uh, broadcast. Uh, that helps us. It helps us to uh, to get get the word out, and so it helps the algorithms to uh, elevate the you know our standing and and all that. So we appreciate that. Uh, don't forget next Tuesday, invite your friends, invite your enemies uh, every Tuesday night at seven thirty. And we love you guys, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you in the uh, the uh, chat room.